I don't know what happened to you all when you were growing up, but of course my mother told me all the time to go out and play in the traffic. So that's, that's what I've been doing here for the last 30 or 40 years, sort of as a hobby. Uh, back in Back in 1999, I was uh, coming back from a project in Lafayette or New Iberia and stopped on the interstate up here. Uh, Governor Foster was uh, uh, governor at the time and then we had the, uh, Dr. Cam Movazaki was the head of the highway department. So I delivered a, uh, a le handwritten letter, uh, hand delivered letter to Dr. Movazaki and asked him to please get the yellow lines up that were down there for several years, restricting it to one lane. Well, as you can see, if you look at the concrete, there's still just basically one lane, even though they got the lines up 20 years ago, there's still one lane. And what we're recommending is the widening of this uh, curve coming into Baton Rouge to be equal to the westbound curve coming out of town and uh, that, that'll add on about 10 feet to that curve. And then there's a major difference in this plan uh, from what DOTD has been offering for the last year or two years. Actually, DOTD is still using a plan that was started 20 or 30 years ago. And that is basically the widening of the entire interstate. And what this plan is showing is the ability to just deal with the choke points where they are. Uh, the choke points, as we all know, have been at Washington, but it's also a disaster down here at Washington's entrance. Besides their exit being a disaster, the uh, exit at Dalrymple and the entrance at Washington, those two are only 800 feet apart. They are supposed to be 2,000 feet apart. The same thing occurs, it's also a disaster with Dalrymple's entrance to uh, the interstate and then subsequently to Louise over here. That is only about 640 feet of separation between the entrance and the exit. So in essence, you have almost red lights on the interstate at Washington's exit here and then Washington's entrance, Dalrymple's exit, Dalrymple's entrance and Louise's exit, all of those are basically red lights on the interstate causing traffic to jam up. In addition, down here at per Arcadian Thruway and at Perkins Road, those entrances, as we all know, are way too short. They are only about 500 feet and they could be 1,000 feet. Of, and so we're recommending 400 foot addition on the Acadian entrance, and we're recommending 600 foot entrance on the, on the Perkins. That'll give us over uh, 15 to probably 1,800 feet of separation, closer to 1,800 feet of separation between those two entrances. And basically, that'll create a very economical fourth lane uh, going, going, through, going through here. <coughs> so, and we saw the potential disaster of, of in, in 2000, the entire community rejected the plan in 2000, but basically the plan that DOTD is proposing is very similar and almost identical to the plan in 2000. And we think it could be done a whole lot cheaper and better without devastation to the community. Specifically, the, the lakes, bridges would all have to be replaced, and that would have to take at least a year or two years or whatever. DOTD is saying they can maintain three lanes in each direction. We have some very significant construction managers that have done very, very large projects that advise our committee, and none of them can figure out just how that would take place. Then the Nairn Bridge over by uh, South Downs and Acadian Thruway, uh, that area, that bridge would be down for a year. 
DOTD is proposing that that bridge go back in the same location where it is now. Well, we just, maybe they could build a new bridge beside it. We don't think so. Uh, but they're not showing that uh, while the other bridge is going to go down. That would be very chaotic for any of you who travel that area in the afternoon. We've still got two very popular schools in that area. The, uh, the, what are the gifted and talented school on college, you know, Westdale Elementary, as well as the uh, school for the uh, visual and performing arts on uh, Acadian Thruway. Well, those schools take away one of the lanes of each of the four lanes every afternoon for about an hour. So when that Nairn Bridge is gone, the chaos is going to be even worse, I presume. So we have one of the major uh, differences in our plan uh, to DOTD's plan is we're suggesting that just as we came up about four years ago with the suggestion of Terrace uh, through the Metropolitan Planning Organization and the Capital Region Planning Commission, uh, that project has been very successful uh, coming down. Although nobody is using it much right now because DOTD has left the Washington exit open. Uh, and that's been their plan all along. We asked them for four years, what could they do with Washington once we opened Terrace? Well, Terrace is open and they've still got Washington open. So we, we're not really sure how that's gonna work out. Excuse me. Uh, well, the, what we're also suggesting and what's gonna happen in our plan, which is a little bit different from DOTD's is, see this gray line through here? That's, we're adding on a little bit more concrete apron in our design all the way down through here, all the way down to here. So this will give us five lanes of merging coming through the, uh, the terrible situation we have now. This will give us 4,000 feet of merging length, whereas right now we really only have about 1,200 feet of merging length from here to here. And as everybody knows, it's basically one lane. You can watch the Washington Street cameras on your DOTD website or the WBRZ, WAFB, whoever they have the, the cameras, which are really nice in the evening. You can watch those cameras. This weekend I was watching it on Saturday, and sadly the Washington camera was looking at the ground. Uh, I, so then I called the police department, the police department called the highway department, and then lo and behold, they kind of corrected it, but it was completely upside down. Uh, you can go on your 511 website now, and turn your phone over and look at it. Works out pretty good. Nevertheless, uh, we are also suggesting an emergency crossover in this plan. The truckers, the, I mean the towing companies, absolutely love this idea. Uh, and it would be a nominal cost for them to position a, a wrecking company, uh, a wrecker there to assist the DOTD uh, state farm trucks that are, are rolling all the time. So, uh, and you know, they, they, they have suggested a cost maybe under $100,000 a year, 60 to 100,000, we'd have to work that out with them. Uh, anyhow, the, the uh, other things that we've suggested uh, in the last three or four years that I guess they're working on is the towing direction. Uh, right now, we divide the towing by the middle of the Mississippi River Bridge by parish. That changed about 10 years ago. Uh, and really the wrecking companies, we've talked to the wrecking companies in Port Allen and we talked to uh, uh, Pee Wee Berthelot, the president of the parish, and all of them seem to like the idea of directional towing and the towing companies also think that would be a good idea as well. We've also suggested that they do continuing education for our policemen. Other states give them a 50 to $100 uh, per month uh, increase in salary if they keep up with the latest continuing ed. We don't think they're doing that right now. I don't know, maybe some in the audience might know that they are, but we don't think they're doing that. Other states do that. Of course, the obvious things that have been talked about, I think Senator Carter 
talked about them was the uh, speed on the interstate. We control speed on the Atchafalaya, so we could conceivably control speed for the trucks there. We've talked to the motor transport, transport people, and uh, they seem to want to agree with us that the restricting the lane use is a possibility, but those are the things that we really need to look into harder. Uh, some actual towing is a, is a key issue. Uh, let's see. Probably kind of free it up for questions. If anybody, there's lots of other things having to do with traffic in our town that I could talk about. We'd love to get the uh, traffic off of I-12 onto Airline Highway. If you Google, if you're in Prairieville or you're in Zachary or uh, Central and you Google how to get from one side to the other, pretty much every time it takes you down the interstate. So Airline Highway has been neglected for 30 to 40 years. It's a, a level of service 2F. I'm not sure that anything goes less than 2F, but it has been totally neglected. About eight to 10 years ago, we were very successful in getting Airline Highway widened to six lanes from Florida to Cedar Crest, and they just put up the signs saying exit to downtown and exit to Hammond. That came in about two or three months ago. We're really excited about that, uh, but it's about eight years late on the signs. I had a client coming from Gulfport and she got lost coming to Florida Boulevard. She went up to the airport and got lost. But uh, anyhow, so we'd like to have those things uh, a little bit better coordinated in terms of uh, traffic. Florida Boulevard has about 25% less volume than it had 15 to 20 years ago. It's eight lanes. It's an ideal connector from O'Neill Lane to Florida, we could have some continuous flow interchanges like we have over on Segan Lane. That works out pretty well. But that's only a half of a continuous flow interchange. Uh, it would be about seven to maybe $10 million to make that a whole continuous flow interchange. Uh, let's see. The uh, options for having uh, Florida, Airline, and other streets improved or, or greatly improved now that the mayor's move BR plan has passed. The sad thing about the projects I'm talking to you about is 70, 60 percent of the city, uh, the roads in the city parish are federal and state roads. And so we are committing city funds basically for federal and state roads. And a lot of people elsewhere feel like that's the thing to do. We really probably had not much choice at that point, but our parish chamber, which represents small business, would really like to see a more equitable distribution of the funds being spent and not the city parish paying for state and roads all the time. We did that on Foster Drive when it was improved on Government Street. We've done it time and again on Perkins Road. And uh, we'd really like to see some better equity uh, with all of that. So uh, I'll open it up for questions. Yeah, Bobby, Gary. In your opinion, what's the one most important project not cost prohibitive, and who could who can make it come true to get done to improve the traffic right now in Elm Street? Without a doubt, the same problem that's existed for 50 years, Gary, is the Washington exit. Okay, so our proposal here is about 70 to 80 million dollars uh, to do Acadian, Perkins, and all of this down here. That is within our regular annual allotments almost, a little bit out of that. I think we get about 50 or $60 million from the federal government. But without mortgaging our whole deal, we could come jump right in on this project. Just like we knew Terrace was going to really help a whole lot, except we really hadn't tried it that much because it's Washington still closed. But without a doubt, cleaning up Washington, coming up here, 
right up here, Gary, and, and, and coming down like this, that's, that has to be done. And that's about $15, 20000000 million. Yeah. Yes, Woody. So, so Woody, Woody Jenkins, Jenkins. Uh, Coleman, uh, in full disclosure, I've worked with you closely on the Chamber of Commerce of East Baton Rouge. To summarize what you're saying, DOTD is about to adopt a plan that will cost about a billion dollars and keep us under construction for 10, nine, 10 years, destroying things like the bridge over the lakes, completely rebuilding those things. On the other hand, this proposal would just take a few years and cost less than a hundred million dollars would basically alleviate our problem that we have now. Uh, yes, to rephrase your question, the uh, proposal at hand that we're given it would be less than a hundred million dollars and DOTD is proposing something at 1.1 or 1.2 billion dollars and this would be done in about three years and their program is going to take nine to ten years in many different segments and have lots of destruction to our business and our so residential the, the community. The problems that we're trying to solve are going to get much worse over the next nine to ten years as a result of that construction project. No one that we've talked to, uh, you know, has come up with a, and you can look at the I-10-BR website, no one has really explained how it's not going to impact us. There's been no calculation from LSU or anybody else as to the overall economic impact. DOTD has articulated 42 properties, about almost 30 of them, residences and business, 32 of them, residences and businesses would be taken. This plan would take up about three or four houses. That's three or four businesses. No, nope, maybe one business around Washington and uh, maybe one business right here, or it's a house right here but uh, in maybe two or three houses over in this Perkins Road area. But you're only talking about a handful of properties here as opposed to over 40 properties in DOTD's plan that would be immediately taken. Uh, okay. And the essence of how the improvements are made is we have very small distances between exits now. If you eliminate one of those, basically, or maybe two, I guess, you create an extra lane. <coughs> Yeah, actually we don't need to decrease, we don't need to eliminate any exits. We just need to do what is in the uh, federal highway and the state highway regulations. Th those things need to be a minimum of 2,000 feet of continuous lanes. Uh, I mean, or they have to be 2,000 feet apart on the entrance and exit. When you have two parallel entrances, like we have over here down below, it's 1,500 feet. I don't mean to get off the subject, but uh, they need to comply with what's in the rule book. And actually, we did comply back in 1983, I believe it was, with Drusilla and Airline. That's a beautiful continuous fourth lane. It's probably the best example in our, in our parish of what really works well with connecting an entrance at Airline and an exit at Drusilla. So that's what we'd like to see down here. Uh, Let me make this up. Three-year plan, 10-year plan. Cost astronomical. Who are the people that's going to steer this? Who's the one you got, we probably got to get to to get their attention to do the, the best? In the year 2000, and, and cost, and I was reading the original plans uh, Gary, in the, uh, in the year 2000, the mayor is the one that made the decision. The mayor of Baton Rouge made the decision. Who, I, you might have been working for the mayor at the time, Gary. I don't know. Who, who was mayor in 2000? Uh, probably, but anyhow, probably, probably, probably. I think, yeah. So he just said that the, the devastation would be too much for the parish. Who's the number one person right now that could make a difference? Of course, the governor. And we really appreciate what the governor has done and, and Sean Wilson has done here at uh, the, the terrace exit. I mean, they have taken a big, huge first step. And then Garrett Graves and Councilwoman Tara Wicker came in and, and I called Tara at 9 o'clock one time at her, 
in her uh, house, and I said, Tara, the state's waiting on you. So it really, Gary, it's a whole bunch of people that need to make the decision, but we all need to think and work together like we've done here on Terrace. Gary Graves came in, he saw it at the Metropolitan Planning Organization, brought it over to Sean Wilson. Sean Wilson liked it. It was a real team effort to get this thing done. So that's what we need here again, but is another team effort. To the Division Administration, Commissioner Jay Darden, to the Head of Highways and Transportation, and the plan is still moving forward, is it? The plan, the DOTD's plan, yes sir, DOTD's plan has a deadline of December the 3rd for everyone to get their comments into the uh, website, I-10-BR, sir? That's the 10-year plan. The 10-year plan. December the 3rd. Yeah. And we'll post our ideas on uh, the Chamber's website. Uh, people want to give us any comments. Chamber EBR dot Chamber, com. Is our website. Yeah. So you mentioned the term a couple of times. I don't know what mm -hmm. the DOJ people do. But could you either explain or define what you mean by um, directional authority? Yeah, I know it's confusing. Uh, right now, the, the responsibilities for towing are divided by parish. West Baton Rouge takes care of there, anything that happens eastbound or westbound up into the middle of the bridge, the West Baton Rouge wreckers take care of it. Anything that happens eastbound or westbound in the middle of the bridge on our parish property line, uh, basically Roadrunner Towing, who has a contract with the city for the interstate, takes care of it. But there are four or five companies in West Baton Rouge Parish that take care of West Baton Rouge Parish. Yeah. Explain again to Washington actually. Is there any plan that's forever close that action? What DOTD wants to do and what we want to do, although they're a little bit different, I'll explain them to you again. What DOTD wants to do is move the entrance to the Washington exit just about where we have it right here when you come off of this entry curve if you have a 2,000 foot radius which is over here somewhere uh, in your curve you can then enter a exit curve okay and I know it's a little bit tricky but we're saying okay repeat which exactly what we just built over here at Terrace repeat that same thing here at Washington, but in our plan we're saying, okay, we've got about 1,200 feet here, we only need about 1,000, let's have a nice smooth entrance and come down here at Louise. Now, what DOTD would like to do is come off over here and come down, uh, you know, to, to, to Washington right here uh, and, with a kind of a long, continuous down ramp, and then they'll have a a parallel road which will take you all the way down here to Dalrymple. A lot of people don't understand this and I was with the LSU uh, planning director the other night at Tara Wicker's meeting and I'm not sure he understands it yet either but they all ask questions about it. But a lot of them feel like that's going to be a little bit problematical for people to get down here to Dalrymple. And what we're proposing is have five lanes, basically five lanes all the way down here eastbound to Dalrymple, and, and they're going to have four lanes in their plan. Sir? Why can't we just close the exit and Oh, I can't tell you how many hundreds of people have said that same thing. Why not just close it, period? Back in, uh, I guess, the 90s, the author of a really important book called Environmental Justice, I think is the name. He's actually from Baton Rouge, Father, Fed, Father Fred Kammer. He was the pastor of Immaculate uh, Conception Catholic Church in Scotlandville. He's now, I think he was, he may have retired by now. Father Cameron was the head of Catholic Charities in Washington, D.C. Well, his book uh, was written, read by several people uh, in the parish, including me, and it just tells you in no uncertain terms, believe it or not, 
that Washington might just might have to stay, even though we've got terrorists. So I don't know. I guess we need to call Father Cameron and get permission as to, to, <laughs> to get it closed. John? Okay, I'm sorry. The question is, can we divert the traffic down LA-1 uh, and use the Sunshine Bridge? And he's saying, is the Sunshine Bridge unacceptable by interstate standards? Well, of course, we know they all just repaired the Sunshine Bridge and got it back to what it was. And so we're all very excited about that. But yes, many people and lots of people, and I'm sure uh, Senator Rick Ward with his committee that he's convening a meeting in December, as I understand. Uh, I'm sure he is going to be exploring any and all alternatives, short term, medium and long term, to get some traffic relief on the west side. We all know how disastrous it is when the uh, intercoastal bridge has gone down. Uh, there's no telling how many dollars have been lost in, in shutdowns and uh, shift changes that, that we need to, we really need to take. Of course, we're, everybody's delighted that the funding for the uh, alternate bridge is in place. That's going to give us a lot of help, and that's going to give your, your thought, John, some, some credibility as that bridge, new bridge is completed. So, anybody else got any questions? Good. Okay, thank you very much. Right.